on assimilation. I am Mel Mailing Chin. Oh, how I love the resoluteness of that first person singular, followed by that starward indicative of being, without that uncertain I-N-G of becoming. Of course, the name had been changed somewhere between Angel Island and the sea, when my father, the paper son, in the late 1950s, obsessed with a bombshell blonde, transliterated Mei Ling to Maryland, and nobody dared question his initial impulse, for we all know lust drove him to greatness, not goodness, not decency. And there I was, a wayward pink baby, named after some tragic white woman, swollen with gin and nembertal. My mother couldn't pronounce the R. She dubbed me number one female offshoot for brevity. Henceforth, she will live and die in sublime ignorance, flanked by loving children, the kitchen deity, where my father dithers, a town cat in Hong Kong trash a gambler, a petty thug, who bought a chain of chop suey joints in Piss River, Oregon, with bootleg Gucci cash. No one dare question his integrity, given his nice, devout daughters and his bright, industrious sons, as if filial piety were the standard by which all earthly men were measured. Oh, how trustworthy are daughters, how thrifty are sons, how we managed to fool the experts in education, statistics, and demography. We're not very creative, but not adverse to rope learning, rope learning, rope learning. Indeed, they can use us, but the model minority is a tease. We know you are watching now and refuse to give you any. Oh, bamboo shoots, bamboo shoots. The further west we go, we'll hit east. The deeper down we did, we'll find China. History has turned its stomach on a black polluted beach where life doesn't hinge on that red, red wheelbarrow. But whether or not our new lover in that last episode of Santa Barbara will lean over such a candle and call us a bitch. Oh Lord, where have we gone wrong? We have no inner resources. Then one weather in the spring morning, the great patriarch Chin peered down from his kiosk in heaven and saw that his descendants were ugly. One had a squarish head and a nose without a bridge, another's profile long and knobbed as a gourd, a third, the sad, brutish one, may never, never marry. And I, history's favorite, not quite boiled, not quite cooked, a plump pomfret, simmering in my Jesus, too listless to fight for my people's destiny. To kill without resistance is not slaughter, says the proverb. So I wait for an imminent death. The fact that this death is also metaphorical is testament to my lethargy. So here lies Marilyn Mailing Chin, married once, twice to so-and-so, a Lee and a Wong, granddaughter of Jack, the patriarch, the rooting Su Lin Fong, daughter of the virtuous Yue Kun Wang and Ji Ji Chin, the infamous, sister of a dozen, cousin of a million, survived by everybody and forgotten by all. She was neither black nor white, neither cherished nor vanquished, just another squad her own bamboo grow, minding her poetry. When one day, heaven was unmerciful, and a chasm opened where she stood, like the jaws of a mighty white whale, or the maw of a mythical Godzilla, it swallowed the whole. She not flinch, nor ride, nor fret about the afterlife, but stay solid as wood, happily, low gnawed, tattered, mesmerized by all that was lavished upon her, and all that was taken away.